Coach Janita, I just met him about an hour ago, and I like him already. We're going to talk some high school baseball, then we're going to come back and talk a little Major League Baseball. So what does a high school baseball coach do this time of year? That's a great question. Um, we have a pretty intense weight training program. We, it's voluntary, of course. So we, we played a voluntary fall season. It was about 12 games. Get to look at a lot of kids that you don't get to see. You know, a lot of the younger kids. Right. We started our strength and conditioning program about three weeks ago. And we'll take that all the way up through the holidays. And we end that with an ugly sweater lift. And we donate a bunch of money to charity, so we do that every year. We'll take Christmas off, and then we'll come back in January and get out the, you know, the bats and balls and, and start to prepare for the spring season. Look, Dr. Mayo, a good friend of mine, head of the Orthopedic Institute to AHN, of course, sports medicine uh, doc with the Pirates, uh, Ed Schnell, all those guys. Um, his son, PJ, played at Pitt. Obviously, we're all baseball fans. He grew up loving the Yankees, one of the reasons I love him today. Uh, Childhood friend Terry Francona, of course, Cleveland, Jim Leland. So baseball is a part of my life. Rich Donnelly, who you and I were talking about just a little while ago, an exceptional coach for many years from nearby Steubenville. One of the things that's happening in the game of baseball, and I've talked to my friends from Elwood City and all over, is the fact you get these traveling teams, okay, where these young players are traveling everywhere, going here, there, and everywhere. You still have great high school baseball, but what about the, the local Legion team, the Colt League, the Pony League, the Little League team? How do you see that moving forward, unfolding, Coach, in this day and age? Yeah, I mean, un unfortunately, I grew up playing Legion baseball. Right. You know, I, I played 12 Little League games a year, then, you know, two All-Star tournaments in Bellevue, right? Right. Um, now Little League is really, it's it, they call it in-house. It's not really great baseball because most of the good players are playing travel baseball. How do you feel? I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I, I grew up playing American Legion baseball a couple miles away, and American Legion in this area is basically non-existent. So I, I don't like it, but on that's on one hand. On the other hand, a lot of these kids that are playing in college, you know, they're playing the 50, 60 games a year in the summer with their travel teams. They're playing with their high school first, and then the 50 or 60 games. So to have an advantage, not to have an advantage, to have a shot to play in college, you almost have to do it because everyone else in the country is doing it. You know, I remember when Terry was playing at New Brighton High School, and he got injured during the season, and he ended up going to college as opposed to going right into the majors, okay? And he won a college World Series, and obviously you know his talent, everyone does as a manager, but he was a really good baseball player. But he blew out one knee one year, blew out another knee the next year, and this was long before arthroscopic surgery and what have you. One thing I must say about players today, and I think you'll agree, these young men, because of what you're doing in the athletic department with Coach Ciro, and of course with your facilities here at Montour, it gives them a shot of staying healthier and having an opportunity to get to college as opposed to some nagging injury because back in the day nobody thought about nutrition, nobody thought about weight training. So sports medicine today has become a great catalyst for a student athlete in baseball, right? Well, I, I mean, it's a, it's, a, if it's a differentiator in our program, and I'll tell you why. Um, the Montour administration approved the full-time hire this year, nice. and it's a strength and conditioning guy. His name is Jay Martinez. And um, Jay, they're, they're, they're out there right now working, and Jay's just a, a pro, he's an expert at it. If somebody's hurt, we'll shut them down, we'll do rehab. But he understands what, base, what baseball players need. He understands what basketball players need. He tailors the workout to them. Um, Jay has been a big part of our success. You know, three section championships in a row, a state championship. Jay has been a big part of that because our kids... Our baseball players have gotten so much stronger over the years. It's a, it's a game changer. I give him a ton of credit. So you, Bellevue, you're connected to Bellevue? Uh, you said you played Little League in Bellevue? No, I used to play Little League tournaments in Bellevue. Okay, well, I grew up in Stow Rocks right oh, Okay, now. well, <laughs> Rocks, McKees Rocks. Sure. Talk about growing up then, a few decades ago, obviously, and what baseball meant to you in the summertime. Yeah, well, there was nothing better, right? You know, you, you played your 12 Little League games a year. If, if you weren't playing, you were there hanging out anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, you're at the refreshment stand. You were, you know, you were talking to the girls. You were doing whatever you did, and it had the community feel. And most of that community feel now in youth baseball is gone because of the travel organizations. And, and I think long term that's hurting some of these young kids because let's face it, it's sometimes who you know and being able to spend the money you can get on these traveling teams. And and I think a lot of young people who have the opportunity and have the ability don't get the same stage because they're not playing with a group of players that they should be playing with their peers. So it's just everything's unbalanced, I think. I think there's a way to do it correctly, but I don't think it should be the way it's being done today. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And oftentimes the families that write the checks, 
you know, kids have an advantage. There's a lot of kids that can't afford, you know, three thousand, thirty-five hundred dollars a summer to play, and and they don't get the same opportunity. Uh, and then on the other, like we talked about a few minutes ago, though, you know, colleges when they're out looking at kids in the summer, they're looking at these travel tournaments, these college scouts. Do you think they need to reset the bar a little bit and start going elsewhere, or they got to go where the players? They got to go where the players are. Mm. Yeah, they got to find. What them. about your team going into uh, next season, 2024? Give me some. Uh, yeah, we're super excited. We graduated 10. Uh, it's the most that we've ever graduated since I've been here in five years. Um, we won the section last year. I think we underachieved. We, uh, we lost in the quarterfinals to a good Latrobe team. Then we went to the state playoffs, and you know there were two 20-win teams in the state playoffs, us and Erie Cathedral Prep, and we played each other in the first round. They beat us by one run on a home run in the sixth inning, so it was a tough loss for the first round. So we're hungry. We did graduate ten, you know, graduated ten players. Um, so that's a lot of opportunity for the young kids. But you know, the goal is the same: win the section, win the Whippeal, win the state. All right, we're gonna come back talk some Major League Baseball, Coach Janita. We're at the Montour here today, home of the Spartans. Uh, don't forget, back on the radio tonight at six. Speaking of the Spartans, I remind all of you the Allegheny Health Network Sports Medicine Friday Night Game of the Week. Coming up this Friday night, they are going to be taking on McKeesport. It'll be semifinal action in the WPIL and Class 4A. Coverage begins at 6 on KDKA 100.1 FM AM 1020. It's your Pratt Pack. Back with more in a moment.